So I want to show you a very simple test that I think is pretty accurate in determining if you have an allergy to a certain thing or not. Now, I'm primarily talking about food allergies, whether it's uh, an allergy to peanuts, soy, wheat, eggs, dairy, shellfish. So to do this, uh, it's very, very inexpensive. Uh, you don't even need anything. You just need to be able to check your pulse. You see, your pulse goes up when you're reacting to an allergy. I mean, if you even think about an allergy reaction, you know, we think sneezing, stuffy nose, a skin reaction, fatigue, mucus in our lungs, blood pressure, anxiety, dizziness, nausea, bloating, or even a headache, right? But you also have your pulse rate goes up, okay, as part of the stress response. And so why can't someone just use the pulse rate to determine if there's an allergies, especially if there's like confusion on like, what are you allergic to really? And this information is based on uh, Dr. Arthur Coca. He's an MD, and he wrote a whole book on this called The Pulse Test, which I will put a link down below. Now, there's a certain way to check your pulse, and I'm going to put a link down below just to give you a little more details on that if you don't know how to check your pulse. But in a pulse oximeter is a very inexpensive, it's, it might be like $9 that you can buy. You put it right over your finger, and you can not only monitor your pulse rate and record that, you can also monitor your oxygen levels too. But this is what you would do. You would get um, maybe a notebook and you start recording your pulse rate. So the first thing you're gonna do is uh, when you wake up in the morning, before you get out of bed, check your pulse rate, right? And you just log this by day. Then what you simply do is check your pulse rate before you eat, and then you check it uh, 30 minutes after you eat, okay? And then check it another 30 minutes after. And then an additional 30 minutes after. So you actually checked your pulse rate before, and then a total of an hour and a half later with intervals of 30 minutes. And of course, you would do that with everything you ate, you know, if you ate a snack uh, or multiple meals. And then you just want to record what your pulse rate is right before you go to bed. And so with that information, you want to also correlate it with your eating. And so we want to make sure that uh, we write down all the things that you ate right next to this pulse rate. I mean, this is very, very obvious stuff. Like, okay, your pulse rate went up. What did you eat just before that? Okay. Could there be an allergy? Now, Dr. Coca observed that um, usually you'll have an allergy if there is a difference between the low pulse rate and the higher pulse rate above 16 points. Now, he also mentioned that it usually has to be above uh, 84 as far as a pulse rate. And if you have a lower reading than that, uh, chances are it's not an allergy. Now, it could be something else. It could be stress in your digestive system of what you ate. You're not able to digest it, or it's creating some other stress. Maybe it's some junk food that creates some stress, but it's not an allergy. It's just something your body doesn't tolerate. So let's say, for example, you record all this information, and then you look at the pulse rate on this page like say you have the pulse rate on the right side and the left side, you have what you ate. And it goes like, like 60, 70, 75, 69, 72, 94. Okay. And then it comes down to maybe uh, 73, right? Okay. 94. All right. That's a big clue. Okay. What did you just eat right before that? And that tends to narrow down uh, a food allergy. Now we're just narrowing it down because chances are you just didn't eat one thing. You ate multiple things, but now we know out of that meal, there's something in there that you're allergic to. And so now the next step is to isolate the specific foods within that meal. And so the next day you're going to take one of those foods out of that meal, and you're going to just do a pulse test around that one meal. And let's say the pulse rate doesn't increase then you just take another uh, food out of that meal the next day. And then you just keep doing that until you narrow down out of that meal, what spikes your pulse rate the most. And then you identify the allergy. And then you can just avoid the food for right now. And you're going to probably find that your digestion is going to be a lot better just from that. Now, what's happening is we're getting this uh, sympathetic nervous system reaction to the food, um, which is like the flight or fight which is increasing the pulse rate because it's increasing the autonomic nervous system. And it's probably uh, creating a lot of stress in the liver because the liver is trying to get rid of this allergy, right? So we have that involvement. So I think this is a very good, valid way of just uh, figuring out what you're allergic to, what you're not allergic to. I remember in practice now, I didn't do this test in practice, but I would send people 
um, to the doctor to get evaluated, get allergy tests. And I would find all sorts of very unusual things they were allergic to. And that led us to uh, refining the diet to avoid those things. And it was so simple, but it created such a dramatic effect on the person's uh, health. So if you suspect an allergy, this is a really good test to um, do. And it basically costs you nothing, especially if you just want to check your pulse rate on your wrist or your carotid artery. And if you haven't seen this other video on what to do with an allergy once you identify it, I put that up right here. Check it out.